when the war in Gaza is over, and that still seems a long way off. Assessments will be made and investigations will begin into how it was conducted by both sides, Hamas and Israel, whether the rules of war were followed. Tonight, News at 10 has evidence of a group of unarmed Palestinians carrying a white flag coming under fire in an area Israeli troops are now trying to capture, having previously declared it a place of safety. One of the group was hit and fatally wounded as our cameraman filmed. The Israel Defence Force has dismissed our evidence. The IDF is not aware of this incident, they told us. But our filming has, however, already raised questions about a possible war crime. What we are about to show is, by its very nature, distressing. This is the edge of the supposedly safe area called Al Mawasi that the Israelis have been encouraging Gazan civilians to flee to. These makeshift homes have been vacated because the war is getting closer. The billowing smoke was evidence of the new Israeli offensive in Khan Yunus that has been forcing more families to evacuate and seek safety elsewhere. No place safety in Gaza. Everywhere you are going, you will find the Israeli uh, army. They are shoot us at home, any building, in the street, everywhere you are, they will give you a chance, sometimes, just for five minutes, sometimes, do not give you any chance to take your clothes, to take your children, to take your family, and to get out of the building. This is our life in Gaza. It's very difficult. These pictures were filmed by a cameraman working for ITV News in Gaza. As he moved forwards towards the combat zone, he noticed this group of men doing their utmost to appear non-threatening trying to proceed with care. They wanted to reach two other family members and get them out of harm's way. The interview complete, our cameraman walked away. And then this happened. The interviewee had been shot and fatally wounded. You can see them place their flag on his chest. As he was carried away, the white flag was turning red. Carry him. They've killed him, yells this youth. Then suddenly, more gunfire. They scream at a child telling him to find cover. By this stage, the man's wife, his widow, has heard what happened. And as she rushes to the scene, she meets the party carrying away the body on a makeshift stretcher. When they're satisfied they're a safe distance away, they stop. And the morning starts. These tragic scenes have been repeated time and time again since this war began. At one point they tried CPR, but there was no bringing him back, this husband and father. Yet another innocent Palestinian civilian killed while posing no threat whatsoever. John Irvine, News at 10, Tel Aviv. Well, the Israel Defence Force's assessment of our filming was that it had, they claimed, clearly been edited in the first instance. Of course, they have a duty to investigate the incident. Uh, John's been taking a look at it and seeking legal opinion on what it shows, John. Julie, more than 25,000 deaths have been reported in Gaza since the 7th of October. Mainly civilians, many women and many children. Israel's critics already say that amounts to a war crime. 
But now, just one more killing, this time beneath the white flag, the international symbol of surrender. Is it enough to reach the same damning judgment? A civil rights lawyer who watched our video says it is compelling evidence. This group of five people are unarmed. They don't have any weapons of any kind. They're waving a white flag. They do not present a threat. So to shoot them without warning, just like that, it's an execution. Now, this is not the first time nor the first war in which the Israeli army has been accused of firing on innocents carrying a white flag. After an Israeli incursion into Gaza at the end of 2008, human rights groups documented 11 such deaths. A subsequent UN inquiry blamed both sides for human rights abuses. Then two months ago, three Israeli hostages, Alon Shamritz, Yatom Chaim and Samir Talaka, escaped their captors and approached Israeli troops waving a white cloth. All three were shot dead. After that, the army's chief of staff made public a clear message to his troops. Think before pulling the trigger. Now, he's telling them that if two Gazans with a white flag come out to surrender, would we shoot at them? Absolutely not, he says. Now, Israel calls its army the most moral on earth, that it does all it can to protect civilians. But lawyers tell us that if that is sincere, it is their legal duty to now investigate. Maybe there are circumstances why this event happened. We don't know. But on the face of it, it seems to be a violation of the responsibility of an occupying force uh, and the, the rules of, of engagement. Now we have to see, will there be an investigation? Separately, of course, Israel is facing a judgment from the International Court of Justice on a charge of genocide. But accusing an army of committing a crime is easy. The actual facts can get lost in the fog of war. Securing a conviction, Judy, that is rare. OK, John, thank you very much indeed for taking us through all of that. Uh, we can return now to John Irvine in Tel Aviv tonight. And, John, this incident raises more questions, doesn't it, over how this war is being conducted, especially now with so many deaths? Yes, Julia, I think this chips away at Israel's moral authority and makes it more difficult for Israel's allies to support this campaign. Add to this the fact that yesterday was Israel's deadliest day inside Gaza, and you're left with the impression that from the Israeli point of view, this war isn't going terribly well. That's perhaps why divisions are opening up within these, the Israeli war cabinet and between Israel and its most important ally, the United States. Now, the prime minister here, Mr. Netanyahu, is maintaining that he is trying to achieve the twin goals of crushing Hamas and freeing the hostages. He maintains that that is achievable. But there are those in the war cabinet and in Washington who disagree with him, who say those two goals are incompatible and that the hostages should be prioritized. Mr. Netanyahu is hedging his bets. He's, he maintained tonight that total victory is what he's after. But he also empowered his negotiators to offer Hamas a new truce, a two-month ceasefire in exchange for the release of the remaining hostages. So nego negotiations are continuing, Julie. Uh, mediators from Qatar, Egypt and the United States certainly are not wasting their time. John, thank you.